an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching to help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM certified wellness coach. Well, hello there, listener, and welcome to Better Than Fine. I am your host, Darlene Marshall. And, you know, there's two questions that I get pretty often. One of them is, what's the difference between personal training and coaching? And the other is, what's the difference between wellness and fitness? And that always then leads to this question of like, well, which one do I need if it's a client or which one do I want to be if it's a practitioner? And my guest today knows all about this question because he lives in this space and is actively working to shape the industry, you know, in ways that I admire and respect. He is a product manager at the National Academy of Sports Medicine, NASM, the producers of this show. He's certified as a personal trainer and a wellness coach. And he and I have this similar pet peeve that I'm sure we're going to talk about today. I know I'll be talking about in some of my uh, speeches at NASM's Optima Conference in October. But it's, you know, these people who've been, they've been in the fitness industry for a long time. They get some extra certifications. They start to think of themselves as doing more than just writing exercise programs. But they're still running a personal training business. They're still training clients and they call themselves coach. And I've invited our guest today, Steve Myers, on because I want to talk about this thing where you're personal training, but you're using the label coach and kind of separate these ideas. What's the difference between training and coaching? And how do you know which you are? Or if you're a client, how do you know which one you want and need? So Steve Myers, welcome to Better Than Fine. Excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you. Um, you know, when I was writing the intro, I was thinking about how I wanted to introduce you. It occurred to me <laughs> that you are um, not only a longtime friend and fan of the podcast, but when I think about you and the podcast, I actually think of you as the first fan of Better Than Fine. That's funny. <laughs> well, I know that we always contemplate over that one concept that led me to you that I can't remember. And we're probably never going to discover what that is. But again, it was really that kind of story we always talk about where I looked up something that I was looking up and it led me directly to you in the sense that you use the term or talked about the concept in the exact way I was looking for led me to you. And then I remember just sitting back and listening to a couple podcasts. Yeah. And I was so honored by that. Um, and so when I think about like you were the first time that someone reached out to me to talk about the show that I had no idea how they had found the show, um, which is also a quick plug to anyone listening. If you have feedback on the show, I definitely want to hear from you. Um, but Steve, I'm so glad, so glad to finally get you on the show. We've talked about you being on uh, for an episode for a long time. Uh, and so when you hear about this difference between you know, personal training and wellness coaching, or even just training and coaching in general, how do you differentiate the two in your mind? Um, I'm, it's complex. So we'll get into that. But I want to <laughs> share the first time ever that I heard the term coach replace the term trainer. And it was a fitness manager I had at 24 hour fitness. And he just didn't like the term trainer. And so he always called himself a coach. And that was really the first time I'd ever seen the two kind of interchanged or used, you know, simultaneously um, back and forth. And so kind of got my brain thinking and uh, just on the subject. And now, I mean, it's some 10, 15 years later from that day. And I think he really thought of himself as a coach because he tried to empower people. Hmm. He didn't want to just give them a program and tell them what to do. 
he wanted to empower people to really take ownership of their health and wellness and then their own journey. Yeah, I think that's a great differentiator. Um, as you say that, I realized the first time I probably heard of it, and I never said this on the show before, but um, I spent eight years working for Equinox and mm -hmm. their top level, let's say fitness professional on the personal training side uh, is called a coach. Okay. And so for me, it was always put on this pedestal as a trajectory that you could be on as a personal trainer. But whenever I'd asked what the difference was, they they struggled to explain it to me in ways that felt tangible, which meant that uh, I also struggled then to explain it to clients in ways that felt tangible. So I'm just going to preface that we may increase the confusion or we may <laughs> sort it out for some people because as we get into it, I, I think about the difference between the two and, and really so many professionals that have been in the service industry for years have probably done both and they, they seamlessly go back and forth um, depending on what their clients need at that moment. And, and so again, we'll try to sort it out, but I'm not making <laughs> any promises that when the show's over, you'll see coach here and trainer here. I, I just, I can't say for certain. Well, I think to your point, I think one of the things you said that I heartily agree with is that as professionals, I see it as a spectrum, not a binary. Right. And so on the one end, we have people who are purely prescriptive that are writing programs and telling people exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. And then I think on the other hand, we have people who are creating spaces for self-examination that are not prescriptive at all, but most of us fall somewhere in the middle, right? hundred percent. Yeah. And I, I totally agree with you. And I guess at the heart of everything we're going to talk about today, just as a professional in health and wellness, it's really your responsibility to sort through the information for your clients and help that information result in transformation. Mm. And so how that happens is, is, is a mystery um, <laughs> for, for kind of everybody, right? And, you know, and we think about the one thing that's really important and that's motivating and getting your clients engaged in their own journey. I mean, mm. that's what we all hope to do. And we know that when we do that, we have very successful clients. Yeah. Um, and so we, we want that. But how that happens always is not, like you said, binary or black and white or, or, or any linear. of those things. Linear, yeah. I, you know, and so I guess really quickly, if we want to talk about moments possibly where you're doing one or the other, I would say that when you meet with a client for the first time, you want to really be digging deep into coaching mm. and you want to provide that space for them to open up um, and get comfortable. Um, so you wanna do a lot of listening, um, do a lot of active listening, do some mirroring, um, reframe back to them some things, you know, really make sure that they're heard. And I think that for so often that's overlooked on that first session, because we try to achieve certain metrics and we try to get to certain outcomes. And I don't, don't know if that's always the right place to be on the first session or not. Again, it's really client to client. So it's hard for me to say you have clients who come in and, and we've all experienced this who really know what they want and they know why, why they're here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so is coaching so important for them at that first session? Maybe not, you know, maybe at that point it really is getting down into some hard metrics and, and maybe just moving where they came in at moving it to an, another step. Yeah, I think what I hear there is, you know, I used to tell my baby trainers when I was a manager, the answer to every training question is it depends. 100%. Um, so for the listener, you're listening to the Better Than Fine podcast. I'm your host, Arlene Marshall. My guest is Steve Myers from NASM. And we're talking about coaching, training. What's the difference? How do you find the right fit either as a practitioner or as a client looking for someone to help you with your own transformative change? And I, I think what I hear you saying there, Steve, is that you know, if you've got a client who's coming in, they know what they want, they know where they're there, it rings true in a really integrated and authentic way that giving them what they want, essentially, in that introduction space. Whereas there's going to be other people who come in and maybe they're less grounded in what they want or what they, I say need in soft quotes, because I think that's a dangerous word for a coach, and, and making the space for them to explore a bit through your guidance 
And what we're talking about there, in my opinion, is like a whole different set of skills. Can you speak to a little bit what that coaching skills are specifically? Like, what does that mean? Because you threw out, you know, mirroring, you threw out um, a few other phrases. And I think it might be helpful to unpack for the listener what that actually is. Yeah. So, I mean, regardless of what you do or what tools you use, I think it's just really important to create that space and let your clients integrate into it and feel comfortable. And so, you know, listening's at the heart of that. Um, motivational interviewing, just asking them kind of to dig deeper into their why without trying to get into too much motivational interviewing and what that is, but really just asking those open-ended questions that get the client's thought process going and, and get them really thinking about some of the things they're saying beyond just the words. Um, I think active listening, which is just showing that, that you're listening and hearing them, reframing or, or summarizing, um, offering them another chance to clarify their message because you just quickly summarize what it is and, and what you've heard. And so then you go ahead and, and you reframe it for them. And, you know, either they have an opportunity to either speak more on it or, you know, you get confirmation that you are hearing them correctly and, and you can kind of move on. Um, one of the things that I think it's important and you never know this, but I think it's good to realize it is that the client's time before they meet you looks different for all of them. Mm. And so if you have clients who know what they want, they've probably spent a lot of time looking at what they want and how they're going to achieve it. And so they come into you, I, I would say a lot more comfortable and focused and, and they, they get in there and you know, right away because they're very, their language is, is concise and, and it's all focused on the same thing. And even when you ask questions, it seems like it comes back to this same, same goal. And, and, you know, some of the things I'm speaking about is people come into you and say, you know, I want to run a marathon or um, I'm doing a hiking trip or I'm going on vacation and we have these activities planned. And so it's very outcome based, you know, very often. Mm -hmm. And so that's a little bit easier to dig into. And I think because your clients are in that space already where they've done a lot of the pre-work, they're comfortable with what they've come into you with is you get started on that because you want to give your clients what they want and you want to make sure that your clients understand you've heard them and thus you start to give them what they want. But on the other hand, there's clients who come in to see you who maybe their decision to come in wasn't as autonomous as others. Mm -hmm. maybe their decision to came, come in to see you was, you know, collective feedback from maybe a doctor or friends or conversations they've had with family. And so there may be just different places, right? And so I think about those people who aren't really sure if they should hire you or not, aren't really sure if they even know what they want what they need when they come in is just so different. Yeah. And, and I don't think that you want to just get started with them because it feels then as if maybe you're pushing their, your agenda on them. Yeah. And, and if I can be additive to that, I think there might be another group where maybe the decision to come in is autonomous. They want to take better care of themselves. They want to feel differently. They've seen something that sparked some kind of inspiration, but they don't necessarily have something tangible, right? It's not like I want to run a marathon or a triathlon. It might be, I, I, I know this will be helpful for my mental health, but I'm not really sure what that means or what that looks like. And I always think of that as a, you know, a subjective opportunity for a coaching conversation where we start 100%. exploring, helping this person to explore themselves because I know for me, I really struggled when I was, you know, I'm going to say this phrase in soft quotes, just a trainer. When I was just a trainer, I really struggled to program like I want to feel good. And now as a coach, I have the freedom instead of writing an exercise prescription to explore that with someone with like creativity and kind of an open ended container instead of the structure that I had been given by fitness. Yeah. Well, that's another thing too, Darlene, and you know this, is that when you work in fitness, especially if you're employed by somebody, they have protocols 
for mm-hmm. first sessions. And, you know, and they have protocols for what they call these onboarding sessions or discovery sessions, or, you know, they're, they're the free sessions. And they have, you know, they want you to hit these certain marks or check these certain boxes. And I, I'm just not always certain that that serves the client the best. Mm. Um, and I'm not suggesting that people go against what their employers are asking them to do. <laughs> but I what might I have am- been notorious for going off script. <laughs> I'm just going to throw well, that out there. That okay, might have well, been a thing well, I used to get in trouble with. <laughs> I think that I think that we all do, and I think yeah. that the good professionals understand when going into those boxes or those kind of uh, pre-scripted activities can be beneficial or harmful, mm-hmm. you know? And, and if you think about some of these things that you do, right. And, and again, you're talking about asking someone to get on a scale. You're possibly asking somebody that you met less than a half hour ago to pinch them in places underneath their clothes or wrap measuring devices around them. I mean, things that I think about that my wife is not excited about me doing, <laughs> you know what well, I mean? And, and for, we've been together 20 years. So for someone I don't, who's not familiar with the fitness context, you know, for somebody who's coming from the wellness space or, or you're uh, uh, looking for this information for yourself, I think it's helpful to say like, what we're talking about there is body fat calipers. Where, body fat calipers or circumference measurements. Yeah. Or a personal trainer might be required by their employer at a gym to assess weight and body fat as part of their standard intake. Um, And I also think it's important to point out to anyone who's listening, thinking about finding the right fit for themselves, you can say no. You signed an informed consent at your intake. And if that doesn't feel like it aligns with your goals and your needs, just say no. (laughs) I would would actually really enforce that, darling. And and tell people that if you don't see value in that in your first session, just say no, say because no. it also takes the pressure off the professional. Cause yeah. the, if you're sitting in front of a good professional, they already know you don't want to do this. Yeah. And so they're contemplating and kind of balancing between the, the asks and needs of their employer and then also serving you. So, I mean, there, that's a really good way in, in driving the session and kind of relieving the professional from the tasks. So yeah. I highly recommend that if you don't see value in that. And so many people like you were pointing out, darling, know that they need to work on stuff and they have opportunities to get better. So what's the point in reinforcing that at that point? I, I, and, I don't see a ton of value in that. And we know, you know, from motivational research, shame, blame, and guilt. You want to demotivate someone as quickly as possible, shame, blame, and guilt make them feel bad about themselves or what they're doing. And here's somebody who, you know, is already taking proactive steps. If they've taken the steps to contact you as a fitness professional, a wellness professional, or let's say they've joined a gym, Mm -hmm. they're already doing the stuff. Like, why would we want to make them feel bad? Right. And going back to what we were talking about too, is some of the contemplations that you have pre coming in. And for some of these people who maybe took longer to hire you, it they their first goal or achievement may have just been changing their self talk, which is then getting them into the gym and talking with you. And you would hate to go back on that, right? You would hate to then somehow or another engage them back into that negative self talk that they maybe just came out of, right? And are maybe just for the first time experiencing, hey, it feels a little bit better not to beat myself up feels a little bit better to focus on some of my opportunities than some of the things that I, that, that I haven't done well. And I think a good professional is going to get you focused on that right away. You know, you come yeah. in, I, I really, yeah, that's really something that, that I'm, I'm firmly believing. And what I wanted to say too, is as a professional, if you can communicate to your employer that you're all working towards the same goals, they'll back off. Right. Because the employer is implementing certain things with you because you may be new or they may not know you yet. Right. You may not have a track record, a successful track record established yet at the gym or the facility. And so they just want to make sure that they set you up for success. I think when you communicate to them that you clearly understand what success looks like for you, your clients and the employer, everybody relaxes a little bit and they kind of let you do your thing. 
Yeah, I think that's a really valid point, especially when you say, well, it's about it's about the client and what's right for them. Um, so you're listening to the Better Than Fine podcast. I'm your host, Darlene Marshall. My guest is Steve Myers. We're talking about personal training, wellness coaching. What's the difference and how do you find the right fit for yourself, whether you're a professional trying to figure out where you fit in this evolving landscape that we call fitness, or you are a client who's trying to figure out what do you want for you? Uh, and Steve, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, you know, we kind of touched this in the intro. We dipped on it for a second. We were talking about your old fitness manager. Um, why does it matter what we call ourselves as whether we're talking fitness professionals, wellness professionals, what we label ourselves? Why does that matter to the industry and to the people that we serve? So a lot of it, I'm going to, we're going to talk about it, I think, from three different viewpoints. We're going to talk about it from you as the professional, then talk about it from your potential client's perspective. And then let's talk about it just really briefly on kind of your overall brand and mm. branding. So first, as a professional, I think it's really important that you use the terms that you're comfortable with and that you can dig into because it comes through. That comes through for you. Right. So when you believe in who you are and you really get behind your professional title, other people see and feel that. Hmm. So and that was what I took away from my fitness manager when he said, you know, I'm just more comfortable with the term coach. And for me, I just was like, awesome. Let's just go ahead and use the term coach because that's where he's most comfortable. And so I think that, that you want to start off with that. And that's really important to you. If you are really comfortable with the term trainer, use the term trainer. I think that's fine. If you're more comfortable with the term coach, use that. Um, but now let's talk about it from something that you have less control over but do need to speak to, and that's your clients. Mm. Um, something that you've already done, Darlene, which I really love, is the term professional. Because that speaks to everything <laughs> and that speaks to everyone. But we'll get to that later because that's subverting the hard question about mm. what's the difference between trainer and coach. But I think about those different titles, training and coaching, and those are actually services you provide, right? Mm -hmm. So you can help train people. You can help coach people. You can help do both. And so I really look at the, those are services. Coaching is a service you provide. Um, it helps draw the individual into themselves, connect with themselves. And it really kind of opens up what I would say a new world for them, right? They start to understand maybe language they've used that's held them back. Maybe they start to identify languages in adjacent areas where they excel is different than the languages in the areas they want to work on. Maybe they realize that some of the behaviors that they didn't think were so impactful on their journey are more impactful now. Mm -hmm. So I really think about coaching as, as an opportunity to go inward and really look at yourself and what you do. And, and it's, a, it's what I call a safe place to do it. There's no mm -hmm. judgment. There's no shame. It's really just about self-discovery and the opportunity for the first time ever to maybe hear yourself and look at your actions void of the external noise. Yeah, Tasha Edwards was on the show a few weeks ago and she talked about uh, safe place as a feeling. Yeah. Right? Like we create the safe space as coaches for people to have that feeling of safety to explore, safety to express themselves, safe to talk about things that maybe mm -hmm. they have never talked to anyone about before that conversation because the the trust and, and the space to do so has been built for them to do that. Um, yeah. The space yeah. is important too. And that's, that's something that's really uniquely coaching and kind of awkward in training. <laughs> in that, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> right. Like, so if you're training, right. And let's just use something like really basic, like, you know, you're teaching somebody how to do something, right. So, you know, you're going through logical steps and you're um, identifying opportunities to get better or you're, um, identifying opportunities where they're really good at, you know, those things and build upon those. So going silent and training is weird and awkward. Like people are going to look at you and be like, yeah, but what's next? What are we doing next? And you're just sitting there and they're like, no, this is like, not, how helpful. do you want to express your movement? Right, right. This is, this is not helpful. 
But then again, what you guys were just talking about, you and Tasha, and kind of creating that safe space where your client says something and then there's just silence and they have that opportunity to reflect upon what they just said. And then they have an opportunity to go deeper and maybe take a next step like they've never taken before. Yeah. And so that's really, really important. And I think also with coaching and the biggest difference with coaching and training is that training is really outcome based, mm -hmm. right? So like training has a role in coaching, right? Cause you can only coach for so long until finally you start to identify some really meaningful outcomes and then you can start training towards them. Yeah. And I think and that's why this coupling of personal training, wellness coaching specifically, um, can be so powerful. And for those of us, you know, like you and myself who are running dual practices, right. Multimodal practices. I, everybody's a hybrid client. Like you say something during a training session that really needs exploration. Cause we've now exposed some kind of, let's say opportunity. We're going to talk about it and we come maybe out of the training modality or the next session starts as a coaching session. Yeah, because and, that opportunity needs to be unpacked, right? Or vice versa, like you just said, the coaching client who has something occur to them that's really empowering, and now they do have an outcome-oriented goal that can be programmed toward game on. Hundred percent. And another another real value in training is it can your clients can get lucid they start to sweat, they get really into the movements or the activities that you're doing. And then all of a sudden they just say something and like, it's not even about what you were doing. It just flies out of their mouth. Like it's no big deal, but you as a coach hear it and you're like, wait a minute, there's something yep. there. Yep. Let's tuck that away. Or I've certainly had times where uh, you know, coaching with a client, something comes up, we move into training that day or the next day or sometime later in the week. And when they start to move their body, that thought and the way they feel in their body relate to one another in a meaningful way. And I mean, I've had clients break down into tears. I've had clients all of a sudden, you know, experience ranges of motion they haven't had before because of the way that their emotional body and their physical body are so deeply intertwined. Yeah. I'm sure it, you have to. It would be weird though. I just want to say it would be weird to say you were a nutritional trainer. Oh. So I was thinking about that, just the interchanging of terms, right? Because nutrition coach is super common and very uh -huh. comfortable. But how often do you hear someone say, I'm a nutritional trainer? Which is interesting because I certainly know I have I have clients who who work with nutritionists who work you know externally with other coaches in various conditions, and so often they're prescriptive, right? Like they're getting nutritional prescription, and to to me that's one of the big lines of training and coaching is: am I being prescriptive or am I making the space for self exploration with you know structured information? Yeah, and then imagine on the flip side hiring a cooking coach. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be coach <laughs> while I'm cooking. Like I need to be let in on the secrets behind yeah, the recipe. Teach me how to chop things. <laughs> yeah. Or like, how did you do that? Or, Hey, you know, anytime I've tried to combine those ingredients, they're all lumpy, but when you do it, it's like, you know, I mean, it's so, beautiful. So, so there's, yeah. And so, I mean, I think that we definitely can get into the nuances of training and coaching, but I think that you really bring up a, a, a really valid point and more important one is that they just happen simultaneously. Yeah. Um, there's opportunities for both. Even if someone were to hire you to get them, you know, from couch to half marathon, right. Which is a complete training program. You know, there's going to be so many coaching opportunities within that. Yeah. Every and client's so a think, hybrid client. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And I think that that client maybe is engaging in that event or opportunity for some external reason that, that drove them there. But then during that training process, you have an opportunity to really connect with them and find deeper meaning into why they are doing these things. Right. Which then coach the wonderful thing about coaching is there becomes those internal connections within your clients, which then drive them to take on additional things and do additional things.
Mm-hmm. And I think that's why coaching feels so good to individuals because yeah. it really and- taps into that efficacy, builds it, helps them understand their capacity, their capabilities, and it, and it reframes all of that stuff through, you know, real life experience. Yeah. And sometimes so far beyond what you're doing for their wellness. Like I've had clients start businesses, change careers, find purpose, like so many things outside of our tools. Um, right. You're listening to the Better Than Fine podcast. I'm Darlene Marshall, your host. Steve Myers is my guest. We're talking about training, coaching. What's the difference? How do you know what's right for you, whether you're a, a client or a professional yourself? And, you know, we see to backtrack, we talked about branding or sorry, we talked about personal identification. What do I call myself? Right. in my own head. We and, and it's about, important that you that you really dig into that yeah. and believe in that. Yeah, I, totally. And we talked about um, what the client needs, what they need to hear, what they need to understand, what they maybe need in terms of, of skill set and toolkit. Um, and then the third thing that you had said was branding. So can you unpack for us that third aspect that you think is relevant when we talk about how are we talking about ourselves out in the world? Or if you're a consumer, what should you be looking for? Well, so let's just talk about from the professional perspective first. And I I think that you need to be realistic with yourself about how much asynchronous engagement there is with materials you put out there about yourself. Mm -hmm. And you don't have any control over that. You don't have the opportunity to fill in gaps when somebody looks at that and something speaks to them in their head. So what I suggest there is understanding who you're serving, understanding the language they use and some of the problems they're experiencing, which that leads to what the solutions you provide are. But then if you really are a personal trainer, if you are a coach, if you are a number of different, you know, things professionally, I would find some way to implement those words in there for them to see and interact with. Because if their solution in their head is hiring a personal trainer and there's nothing on your side about you being a personal trainer, they may not hire you. Yeah. And that, and that, and that may be a huge disservice to them because they needed you. Right. But because you think about yourself more holistically and you think about all these other things you provide, you didn't put training in there, right. You didn't put personal training in there. And so Mm -hmm. then you miss this opportunity. So I just, I, I just think about that is you don't have a lot of opportunity to control what's going on in those instances. So I hate to say it, but figure out a way to kind of create a catch all in some of your branding. Right. And it doesn't mean that you call yourself something different, but just in the services you provide or in how you speak to your clients, potential clients, anyone interacting with your materials, make sure you understand some of the languages they use. And yeah. implement that language in there. So that way they connect with what you have there. Because ultimately, we're trying to get to that session, right? To where you get to be one-on-one <laughs> with the client, right? And they get to meet you and you get to get into the nuances and really help them. But what you don't realize is that there may be 15 touch points with materials you put out there that may oh, result yeah. in you getting them or may result in you never talking to them. Yeah, they're in your Instagram, they're on your TikTok. To your point about how you found Better Than Fine over two years ago was they Googled something and landed on your blog within, in our case. Um, and and they're going to soak up all of it before they even reach out or before you even know they're looking at it. But I think the inverse is also true about, you know, you said make sure you put personal training on your website if you're offering personal training. I think what we call it also sets an expectation of what it's going to be like to consume our service. Um, And what immediately comes to mind for me is, you know, I had had a client I could no longer serve. And so I referred her to someone I knew who called themselves coach on all of their media. Um, And so the client and I both had this expectation of this like high touch container for her to look at her stuff and also have a movement program with a lot of support because that's really what that that client needed. And in actuality, it was a web-based exercise prescription with asynchronous check-ins. And so it wasn't really coaching. It was asynchronous passive personal training. Um, And so to me, it's also about being clear 
with the offering, because if you're writing exercise prescriptions with a hands-off approach, it doesn't really fit the definition of what we've come to believe as, you know, life coaching, health coaching, wellness coaching, you know, self-care coaching, spiritual coaching, like pick your coaching, executive coaching. Yeah. Um, but that's a high touch container of self-examination. It's not, you know, exercise prescription. Well, yeah, now, I mean, now you even brought up something that's emerging even more now, darling, and that's just like bot based coaching. Yeah. And those type of services, right. Where they look for certain keywords that you type in and then those keywords kind of produce certain responses or so forth. And, um, I, I'm sorry for your client because that sounds like it was a real miss, but at the same time, for some people that oh. may be okay. Right. Yeah. And, and, and integrating that kind of bot coaching into a service that you provide can be beneficial. I mean, I know personally I'm signed up on some apps that provide, you know, buy daily alerts and they're totally just pre-canned, you know, but I still sure. like them. It's still nice. You know, you think it's a text message and then you, it's something else. You're like, Oh, that was nice. Oh, and there are even some studies that show that in certain conditions, that bot-based feedback is more effective than a human being. Um, the, the study that immediately comes to mind is treatment of PTSD, because that person has such a deep like shame, guilt response to burdening yeah. another human being that a bot allows them to open up and get the feedback and validation without feeling like they're hurting anyone else. And so I'm not saying that those conditions are never worthwhile. And I know that this particular uh, practitioner does have a pool of clients that they serve very well and who get results and are happy. I'm just saying as professionals, we got to be clear about our offering because otherwise the market gets muddy and then everybody's got dirty shoes and nobody's getting what they want. <laughs> yeah. You just, you brought up something right there though. That was really a real big benefit of coaching and I already lost the word because I was listening <laughs> to other stuff that you were saying, <laughs> but it's, it, it has to do with being in a space and sharing with others. Oh, it's mm, burdening, burdening. The term burdening. Yeah, yeah, that was, and that coaching for so many people, maybe the first time they've ever talked about themselves where they didn't feel like they were burdening somebody else. Yes. And that's one of the benefits of coaching. And that's one of the benefits that you can provide to people in the early stages, particularly if they're not so focused or sure about what their goal is, right? Mm -hmm. Just taking them out of that, like we were talking about earlier, self-talk from, oh, I'm just this burdening individual and others who constantly need space to talk about themselves and things like that. Well, as a coach, you can just completely change the way they feel about that. Mm -hmm. the way they feel about themselves, which then starts to change the way they hear themselves. Absolutely. Right? Because if you think you're a burden on somebody, 30 seconds into your talking, you're back to going, oh my gosh, I'm doing the same thing I always do. And I'm just going off and I'm just burdening this individual, yeah. right? And there's really no space for you in that yeah. at all. And, and who knows if that's even true or not? Right. Like, I mean, we know that our self talk is not extremely <laughs> accurate. accurate nor positive. And it's certainly not the way others hold us or see us. Well, and to your point, you know, if our thoughts create our reality and what we believe to be possible, right? So your thoughts, your mindset creates the opportunity for what kind of results and bandwidth you're able to produce in your life. And so if you're in a mental habit loop of shutting yourself down, shutting yourself down, shutting yourself down. And you don't think that you have someone who you can open up to without it feeling like a burden. And then a person comes along that makes that safe space, the way that Tasha described it, that holds the container that also, you know, sometimes overtly communicates to you, you are not too much, be who you are. And I'm, I am here for you for this. Yeah. And that gives you the opportunity to change your thoughts and your perception of yourself. The downstream effect of what that can do in your life is, I mean, inquantifiable, in my opinion. I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> I think about something else that you that you touched on too there is really 
we hear a lot about coaching today and we read a lot about coaching. Like you were pointing out earlier, that like it's coaches for everything. Yep. And they get in, they've done, you know, media has done a really good job in kind of identifying, well, why is coaching so important? What's so different about coaching? But in the process of doing that, we also identify and reinforce that most people have no interest in listening to you and are just waiting to talk. So it's interesting that while someone's reading about why coaching is so important and so and, and be so impactful for them, they're also getting some reinforcement about the burden they are and how when yeah. other conversations with other people. So it's just it's it's this weird thing that that happens. You know what I mean? And again, I think that it all goes back to you not knowing where your client's coming in from. Yeah. And what you can do for them and be beneficial for them no matter what is just providing them an hour of your time to give them what they need. Yeah. And, and again, it's not always going to land in you getting the client or it's not always going to land in that. But I think that as a professional, you can feel good about every single one of those sessions in that, you know, I sat there. And I did my best to really nurture the client with what they came in and came in with and where they're at. Yeah. And, and made space for that person. Yeah. Yeah. And again, if two minutes of space, yeah, if two minutes of space, you realize, oh man, this person is focused and ready to go, get them going, (laughs) right? Like like, get it going. And and, let's go do that strength training. I'm going to get out the calipers game on. Yeah, yeah they, I, I mean, if they're coming in and train. going like, "Hey, I want to do the questionnaire. I need to get on the scale. I want to get, I want to see what my fat calibration. You know, I mean, I want to do all that stuff. Oh, do not shy away from doing that stuff. No, like, go in. Like this person told you exactly what they want. They know what it is, and realize that within that doing that stuff, you're building that that safe space for them. You're building rapport with them, which is going to lead to coaching conversations and self discovery. I think that's a really powerful place for us to to wrap up here is this idea that neither of us is saying personal training or wellness coaching is in any way better than the other. It is that there are clients who come in that are on a journey toward whatever their motivated outcomes are. Like they came in and they might not even know why. And having tool sets that can meet somebody where they are and walk them toward their aspirational self. We're just talking about how do you use multiple tool sets and recognize where people are at and, and to own that training and coaching are different. Fitness and wellness are different. There are different scopes of practice and distinct tool sets and finding who you are, where you are, what you are about is, is this conversation. It's not about judgment of either or. Yeah. I, I, totally agree. And I, you know, I always think about training is, is how you get somewhere. Coaching is figuring out where you're going or what you're getting. Yeah. Um, I describe it as, um, training is directional. If I want to drive from Vegas to LA, I need turn by turn instructions. Coaching is, uh, excuse me, Training is destinational. Let's get that right. Um, But coaching is directional. Let's explore that way and see what we find that's relevant and interesting. And maybe we end up in San Diego instead of LA. And that's okay because it's West and it's warm, but not too warm because Arizona is too hot for me right now, man. (laughs) Yeah, no, but I I love that because again, it's like, oh, I want to go to Southern California. Okay, well, what does that mean? I'm in Southern California, Santa Barbara to San Diego, right? But then through coaching, you figure out, oh, I want to be in San Diego. Oh, San Diego's great. All those Navy SEALs. Uh, Steve, where yes. can people find you if they want more of what you got going on? I, I am not on socials and stuff like that. You're Although, on LinkedIn. That was I am, a lie. I am on LinkedIn. Yeah, I, didn't even, <laughs> I don't even know how to tell you how to find me there. Um what I would what I would say is I'm going to throw out my email address, and I know that probably sounds crazy, but I really do love talking to people, love yeah. hearing from professionals, and I probably have learned more from the professionals out there than I have from anybody else or anything else. So, just want to throw it out there. It's my first name, Steve, 
with a period or a dot, and then my last name Myers, and that's M Y E R S at N A S M dot org. There we go. Um, that's my direct email there at work. I'm sitting in front of that, good eight to ten hours a day. So <laughs> shoot it on over. But I, you know, I would love to hear from anybody out there who has questions or wants to dig in deeper or just has something to share or talk about. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to second that uh, on your behalf. Steve really does want to talk to you, uh, especially if you have feedback on, on pretty much anything to do with the conversation we just had certified wellness coach, certified personal trainer like Steve genuinely I, wants to talk to you. <laughs> please let me know all the things I missed all the things I got wrong. You know what I mean? All of those things as well. Like, if I didn't say something that resonated with you, or if you have something to you know, I mean, please, like, I would love to talk to you and hear about all those things. I think one of the um, greatest things about coaching and training and all that stuff is is that there is a sense of community yeah and and we love to support one another um i don't i don't think about it as stealing stuff from others but i love to take tidbits from other people that would just really resonate with me and i can say that that's probably a lot of what i've built uh what i do off of is just taking these little tidbits from from people and i just love that it's not stealing, it's remixing, Steve. You're just remixing it. <laughs> That's totally fine, however however you guys want to say it. But yeah, I, I really uh, I feel like that. So I would love to hear from anybody out there. Yeah, Steve, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. As our first fan, uh, it was an honor to have you on. Back I don't know about that, darling. I'm pretty sure that when I looked at, watched some of the podcasts, initially there were thousands of views but nevertheless um it was it was somewhat serendipitous in that in the sense that then i did get introduced to you through another co-worker and i was like oh my gosh i already know about darlene da, 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 da. and they were he was like what okay now i feel like we have to tell the story okay so you were googling something neither one of us actually know what the phrase was but somehow but you had you spoke directly on. to the term and yeah. you were like the only person who had directly used the term i was searching and you used it in a way that I was searching for it. So we'll, we'll stop with that. Yeah, which I still think must have been pragmatic optimism because that is the only blog post that was up at the time that had any kind of unique spin. But maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, so you heard David Van Daff interviewing me on my birthday back in 2020. Um, so pretty early in the existence of the show um, and emailed DVD, who then forwarded me your email which was like, oh my God, you know Charlie Marshall. I'm like, who is this guy? And how did he even find me? And that's why I say you're my first fan because it's the first time, you know, doing a podcast on your own for two years means that you're kind of like speaking into the void <laughs> and just hoping that the void whispers back at some point. And you yep. were the first time that the void whispered back. And so oh. that's why in my head, I think of you as the first one. Fantastic. Well, I really enjoyed them. I listened to a couple different ones on topics I knew nothing about, learned a ton and uh, got interested in some, uh, you know, kind of adjacent communities that I didn't know anything about. And so spent some time in there and learned a ton. No, so thank that you. That makes it very validating to me. Oh, well, thank you. Um, yeah. And and to the listener, uh, if you're listening and you have questions, thoughts, feelings, feedback, any anything that you've experienced as a fan of the show, I definitely want to hear from you. So here's a few places that you might find me. I am also on LinkedIn and very easy to find. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. I'm darling.coach. You could also shoot me an email because like Steve, I'm a crazy person who wants you to know how to find me. And if you are the fan <laughs> of this show, subscribe wherever you are listening. If you're on YouTube, drop us a comment, hit that like button, let us know and share the show. And if you do tag me any of these social channels uh, so that I might hear your thoughts and feedback. Uh, and thank you to everybody who's recently been sending me DMs on Instagram. Uh, keep sending your feedback and thoughts and questions, anything that comes up for you as we're talking, uh, because we're going to be using them in a future show this fall. And I want to know what you want to know so that we can be tailoring the content toward you. And thanks.